nylon ponchos and their big brother, the shelter sheet, are great. They're lightweight, they're waterproof, they're versatile. However, they don't work well with abrasion and they are very susceptible to damage from sparks and campfires. If we want to use open fires while bushcrafting, the alternative is to use some cotton or canvas type of shelter. We've already seen the Hungarian salt barn. Now we'll have a look at the Polish Lavu tent, or rather the Polish Lavu tent made from two shaped cotton ponchos. The Hungarian poncho uses aluminium buttons to fasten together. They're thin and they're very sharp and with cold hands they're very difficult to put together quickly. So it's usually a good idea to have one side completely fastened and the other side half fastened so you can get the thing pegged out and put up as quickly as possible. The metal buttons are very sturdy and they're riveted on. If one should come off it's fairly easy to sew on an ordinary button or better still use the top button of a pair of jeans. You can buy these in just about every haberdasher's and all you have to do is put the stem through and hammer the button on. The two parts of the larvae button together quite easily. However, the thread can rot and buttons can come off. But it's easy enough to repair, as you can see here. For setting up the tilt barn easily, it's a good idea to keep them fastened together until you need them. Start by pegging out one corner, then the other three, till you've got a rough square shape. Put the poles inside the tent in two sections before you join them together. Then put them up the centre holes. Once you've got the rough shape, pull out the sides and tension it using all the pegs that you have. To set up the larvae, have it buttoned together, but make sure you can get in and out one gap. Peg out one corner, then introduce the poles, putting them together inside and erecting them. Then peg out the other side, then the third, then the fourth, till you've got the rough shape. Then using the other pegs, pull it out till it's taut. The takedown procedure for the telt barn and the larvae are very similar. Pull the pegs out from the front until it collapses. Then remove all the pegs and store them. Then take out the tent poles, pack it all up in the bags, roll it up and fasten it down. The larvae is slightly bigger and a lot more comfortable as you've got substantially more space, more than you would think by looking at the two structures. Okay, so do you want a stelt barn or a larvae? They're simple, old technology that makes them easy to repair and they're robust. They can be waterproofed as well. However, they are heavy and even heavier when they get wet. You can't store them wet. You've got to dry them off before you put them away. You've got to take care. They're not overly large. Especially the telt barn, which is ideal for children and small people, but not for people of average height. Especially as both the telt barn and the larvae have a middle pole. To get enough room to use them properly, you either hang them from a tripod or an overhanging branch or make a V-shaped pole. To make the space saving poles, I used the rubber walking stick end, the Y shape from an old tent and some dowel. Each silk barn has a set of poles which will allow it to be put up. In total I made four extra poles, two for each set. The easiest way to put up the silk barn was peg out the back, put in the bipod, pull out the front, peg it down and then peg it out and then adjust it by moving the pegs. Once the bipod's in place and you've got it pegged out it's quite a comfortable size for one person and a lot of gear. You can use a plastic disc 
to keep the rain out. And providing you pack it up in a logical manner, you won't lose anything and it'll be ready for the next time you want to go out. Similarly, lay out the lavu, put in the poles, put the poles up, peg them out and your shelter's ready. Both the lavu and the silt barn can be used singly to make a windbreak or sunshade. The lavu and the silt barn make a sturdy, if somewhat heavy, alternative to nylon sheeting that's ideal for use in bushcraft where fires and sparks are involved. If you've only got a little bit of time, you can get out there and practice putting up your tent and sorting out your gear. So get out there, get training, you know it makes sense, it will serve you well.